Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another day of chess streaming. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say too much. Today is we're going to play some uh, Blitz and some uh, Bullet. In the chat, I'm going to link to what you can do to challenge me. Uh, to challenge, you can just click these links as long as you are um, logged in to your chess.com account. Uh, Aquila asks, how are you not watching the World Cup? Um, that's a pretty good question, especially seeing as how I stated uh, Iceland being my favorite team. Uh, in my defense, I was watching the World Cup uh, until the Norwegian broadcaster got trouble with their... Um, well, they're streaming somehow. I mean, basically now nobody can stream the games uh, via uh, NRK, which is the um, the broadcaster. Um, so for the moment, I don't even have a choice. Uh, a shout out to Vertvich, who is up at 6.30 a.m. Ready for some games. Uh, I already have a couple of incoming challenges. Uh, so I'm going to start out with uh, with those. The first one uh, is Bolle or Brus, uh, which translates from Norwegian uh, to um, buns and soda. Uh, and that is the main ingredients of any Norwegian celebration. Yeah, it, it's going to be... Oh, he didn't take this back. Uh, it, it's going to be tricky the next couple of weeks scheduling streams without... Uh, oh, I'm going to sacrifice my queen. Okay, I got a tactic to win a piece. Yeah, it, it's going to be difficult with scheduling uh, since... Um, the World Cup is going to basically take all of my good streaming hours. So I guess I'm going to try to be streaming when nothing good is on. But on the other hand, it's the World Cup. And World Cup makes everything good. So even Morocco against Iran is good when, uh, when the World Cup is, is going on. Uh, also, hello to um, to Dayan, one of the first people on the scene. And Bolle or Bruce uh, loses the first game. And let's step to our next challenger, Aquila. How are you today? Are you watching the World Cup whilst my broadcast is not working? We're gonna play the Karo Khan. I'm gonna allow you to take this one. I'm not sure that's a good idea for me, but done is done. Okay, I'll take this one and then this one. I'm a bit nervous about eating too much okay so if i go back with this guy you can take and this is hanging yeah i think i got a little bit greedy just a tiny bit greed tiny bit of greed okay even aquila is watching the world cup maybe i should try checking whether NRK has fixed their issues. I don't want to be the only guy on stream that's not watching the game. Okay, F4 challenging the knight, which is pretty much why I put the bishop on C5 to protect the knight, being able to play E4. Ooh, that's, that's a move. I don't think giving away your queen for nothing was the best solution. 
it was a pretty tense game up until that point. Uh, but with a queen up, I would say I have the better chances. Yeah, let's just make some moves. Ooh, rook takes d5, exploiting the pin. But seeing as how I am a queen up, I'm gonna just give back some material uh, to give myself a rook up instead, but exchange some of the pieces. <laughs> Thank you, Vopsula who says you're a beautiful man okay so we got ourselves a passed pawn probably the king is going to come over and block i should have prevented that somehow Ooh, and now the rook on the open file coming next It's a bit of a blockade, but on the other hand, I'm a rook up, so I'm not too concerned. Okay, this is promising because now the bishop has to move. So I get my rook into, um, into d2. I like the bishop pawn combo in white's territory, says uh, Vertwich. Yeah, but at the same time, this bishop is kind of blocked out of play because of the pawn. So um, I could go either way on that. Uh, but I got to push my uh, my past pawn, and that's gonna um, that's gonna bring the win. Bursting is in the house. I do not have a lot of challenges, so you are very welcome to uh, do a second challenge, if you so please, if you want to get, you know, get crushed one more time, that is an option. Let's go bishop e3, grabbing the d4 square, preventing black from, from putting his knight up there, making some threats. And now I'm preparing to castle queenside. I'm not sure I was threatening knight b. I think this move was directed at knight b5, but that wasn't really my plan anyhow, seeing as how this knight on e6 is protecting the the c7 square but now i am intending pawn to f5 with a fork on the knights uh, let's go bishop f3 pointing it in this general direction now maybe this move my idea is castles then i take this knight and go bishop g4. And now my idea is that this knight doesn't really have a lot of good squares. If bishop d6, e, um, if bishop e7, I'm considering d6. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll just... So this knight is out of squares. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't have an immediate breakthrough. So I should just improve my pieces for a little bit. Rated challengers or not, asks Eirik. Um Well, I mean, it's up to you, but if I were in your shoes, I would do rated. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
I'm fine with rated. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna win my all my games. I mean, and if I don't win all my games, you deserve some rating points. That is my uh, my feelings on this topic. Okay, so I've started pushing my opponent's pieces back. I guess I'm gonna go c6. Now forcing the bishop back to c8, even though I'm not able to make that arrow. And now the big question is how to proceed. I guess I'm going f5, trying to go bishop h5 some point in the future. And uh, now bishop c5 is pretty good because of the pin. The rook is unprotected. And now let's give a check. And then check. Another check. Yeah, you probably you should have just taken this bishop because now you went into this diagonal uh, and your rook is in some trouble. Let's take this one. Ooh, let's take that one. And that one, kind of running out of pieces now. Kind of running out of pieces and bursting resigns. Okay, next opponent is uh, Marcus. Marcus, what do you have planned? Okay, this time I'm gonna play the um, Owen's defense, I believe this is called. Getting that fianchetto threat against e4. And then I guess I'm going to fight for central control by playing d5. Now I'll go c5 first. Um, knight c6. I want to get some control over these two central squares before pushing d5. Queen b8 is about the square, and so is bishop d6. I have good control of, over the um, the black squares in the center. So now I would like to play d5, but my bishop is kind of in the way. I'm going to play a6, and then maybe knight d4. But a6 first, because then I'm taking away the square on, on b5 for the knight. And also maybe I'll play b5. Okay, maybe I underestimated that move. I thought if he gives me the bishop pair, I'm not going to have any any stuff going on. Yeah, if you're going to give away the bishop pair like that, I really think you should put your queen into the attack, making a threat against the pawn on f6, which it's actually kind of difficult to face. Whereas now I'm just going to um, I'm going to use this open G file to create an attack uh, towards white's king. Your hairstyle is crazy genius, says Ibrahim. Uh, thank you. I call it the shake. Just, you know, shake, shake the hair a little bit and see what happens. And today this happened. 
Okay, I'm gonna double with the rooks. So I'm gonna get my queen up. Okay, this is a good plan. This is a good plan, trying to take control of the uh, the dark squares in the center. I like this play. Uh, maybe I haven't been paying enough attention to my opponent's ideas. Okay, I'm gonna go knight e7. The idea is that if d4, then f5. And I'm gonna open up for my bishop towards white's king. So now white has full control over the dark squares, but on the other hand, he has lost control over the white squares. So in a matter of three moves, my focus changed from the um, the light square from the dark squares to the light squares. Uh, Udai asks, "What time controls are you accepting?" Um, I'm doing a three minute and one minute games. Three minute and one minute games. If there are, right now we have a bit of a queue, so right now I'm just gonna do that. Okay, and um, there comes the blunder. A good game up until that point, but a blunder gets punished immediately. He couldn't take back because then there would be a check on the king. Cannot take back on d4 because of the queen. Next move, I'm going to get a central pawn, or I'm going to get this check, both of which are pretty nasty. Okay, next game is against Spruce Gum. Spruce Gum, please get ready for your game. Ooh, and with the fork, the royal fork, the king and the queen on the same and now for the queen coming to give the checkmate. And Marius resigns. Okay, Spruce, you're up next. Let's play uh, E4, as recommended by Bobby Fischer. Good game, says Marchist. Presumably that is our Marius. I put up a good fight for 10 seconds at least. No, actually, I think you did more than that. I liked your plan of taking control over the dark squares after you heard me kind of say that I was having a dark squared strategy. Um, but I had to think there for, for, I think I thought for that move like 15, 20 seconds. Uh, and I found a strategy to take over the light squares to kind of switch strategies as you... Uh, prevented my main strategy. I thought that was good from both of us. Halvar is in the house. Okay, we're gonna go for the attack. We're gonna remove this fianchetto bishop close to the king and we're gonna be attacking, pushing that h pawn up. Okay, also this uh, central structure where white has his pawns a little bit higher. That's uh, pretty good. Uh, pretty good to have. Uh, when you're trying to attack your opponent's king. Come on, also in the house. We got ourselves a bit of a crew. Some Norwegians, some Canadians, some Americans, Californians. We got ourselves quite the crowd. Hmm. So now this is interesting. How do you continue the attack? So I think think what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say this king is gonna be in so much trouble with 
a uh, a pawn so close and then I'm gonna go for the queen exchange am I gonna do that I'm tempted to go for the queen exchange yeah I think I'm gonna do that Because now, in this ending, this pawn should be very, very good. Okay, I think white, black's only move right now is rook c2. And honestly, I didn't think he was going to find that. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to find that. Yeah, because otherwise I can just take control of the c file. No problem. But still, it's very good because this guy is in trouble and I'm preparing to to go for the C file. Because now he, he, he stops my main plan, but my reserve plan is just taking a pawn. So I, I had a good position anyhow. Yeah, and now I'm actually going to ignore this guy because I'd rather just have control over the C file. Actually, I may have made a mistake because of rook c8. Uh, when control over the c file is actually not happening for me. Okay, let's take this one. I think I'm going to give checkmate just because of this king. I think this king is just in so much trouble. Uh, I'm, I'm low on time. I'm low on time. So I should play a bit faster because I'm not getting increments. Yeah, I messed this up. Uh, I messed this up. I mean, I'm still winning, but it's not as easy as I would have liked it to be. Yeah, because now I gotta. Ooh, and I gotta stop this guy. Um, might I might actually be not winning anymore, <laughs> which uh, comes as a bit of a shock. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure what happened. I, at some point, I started playing horrendously, and I'm being punished for it. Okay, still my pawns are pretty dangerous, and with time running low. Anything could happen. And there my pawn just queen, which is also n always nice. And it became uh, a bit of a situation, but I got there in the end. Uh, who will win the World Cup asks you die. Italy or the Netherlands? Uh, I'm going to say neither. I don't think those guys... Well, the Netherlands are not even in it. Oh, no, wait. Is Italy in? Well, surely they qualified, right? But the Netherlands are out. Easy for England, says Alec TV. Wow, what kind of drugs are you taking? England winning the World Cup. That is retro optimism. You gotta be pretty, pretty retro to think that England can accomplish anything in a championship. 
when is the last time they won in 66 it's been a while it's been a while for them no i don't know i guess the experts are saying that <clears throat> It's going to be between Germany and um, Brazil. I'm with you there, says El Dono. What I, I can say is that the English spirit is really impressive. Time and time again, they fail in the championship. And time and time again, they think, well, this is our year. I really, I never really pegged Brits as the uh, optimist kind of people. But when it comes to World Cups, you have faith. Yeah, speaking of people who didn't qualify, well, speaking of the Dutch, I guess the U.S. did not qualify either, nor did the Canadians. You guys are so bad at soccer, you have to buy the championship to, to even get to participate. Shut up, says Timothy. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether you're getting at me for the, I, I insulted so many countries the last three sentences. I, I honestly cannot tell if you're asking me to shut up about Canada, the US or England. But in either case, regardless, I apologize. Uh, it's just, you know, it's normal, normal normal humor for a a country that hasn't seen any world cup action for 20 years and really doesn't look like we're, uh, we're gonna see any for the next 20 either so yeah norway in a bit of a dry spell actually there's a guy uh in the icelandic team who had this huge opportunity opportunity to score when when it was still zero zero, nil nil, and um, and he actually he moved to Norway when he was eleven, uh, and speaks Norwegian. So we have some Norwegian speakers in the World Championship, uh, but they play for Iceland, not for Norway. Norway could qualify for World Cup. Iceland did, says Vopsua. Um, yeah, I don't think th that correlation is um, based in logic. I think something is off. Something is off there. Uh, Force a Draw uh, asks, Hammer, do you give Karana good chances for the match? Um... Yeah, I guess. Um, it, it's a bit of a problem for him, I think, that he lost all three games against Magnus um, after the candidates. I mean, one pretty in insignificant blitz game, but also... Oh, no, he drew in, in, in that tournament in Germany, but he was under pressure with White. And also Magnus got a nice win in, in Norway chess. So I think... Yes, Fabiano is doing fantastic this year. Um, but also he's having bad individual results and positions against Magnus. Uh, so I don't know if what counts more, that he's playing well or that he's getting outplayed by Magnus. Uh, but I, I would give him 30%. Maybe it's too much. Maybe I don't fully kind of understand how good Magnus is, but 30, I mean, if you're a 70% favorite, you're a pretty significant favorite. Uh, Tom asks, who are you rooting for in the World Cup? 
Um, seeing as how you have Fjord in your name, I'm guessing you're Norwegian. Uh, so I, my, my policy on this question is that I, uh, I say what people want to hear. So last time somebody asked, it was a guy from the Faroe Islands. And I answered that I chair for Iceland. Uh, now with the Norwegian asking, uh, I'm going to say that I chair for Denmark. And if a Swede asks, I'm asking, uh, I'm chairing for Sweden. So I'm going to be very populistic about that question. Uh, Jeramini asks, please pick me. I never played you. If you're in the queue, if you have a challenge and I can see you on my list, you will get a game. So right now you're number five. You're number five in the queue, Jeramini. Uh, Liam is in. And there's some talk about the World Cup, which I missed. Oh, Italy actually didn't qualify. Wow. That's, that's pretty sick. Uh... Ooh, and I'm I'm actually in some kinds of trouble. Knight G4 coming up with some pretty strong threats. I should pay more attention. Uh, not any comments about our game? Asks Vertrich. Um... I don't know. It's kind of early in the morning for you, right? I, I, I kind of feel like your play reflected that fact. Um, I don't think that was your best game. The U.S. not making it is embarrassing, Sicilian. Well, actually, the U.S. has a Norwegian on on the team. Actually, a Norwegian that was visiting. Ooh, and Bishop takes h7. I'm completely blind today. The, I mean, I'm missing so many scary moves. Let's try to exchange some pieces. Um, yeah, no, uh, actually, one of the U.S. players... Um, uh, was at Norway Chess last week. Uh, he's a Norwegian, but I think his mother is American. So he holds a U.S. citizenship and plays soccer for the U.S. Uh, his name is uh, Mix Diskehud. He actually went to my high school. Uh, my only memory of him is that he started yelling out when he was done with his uh, Norwegian exams. Uh, and let's just say that he finished before most other people. So I don't think he did very well. But he was very happy just to be done with it. Uh, anyhow, he was uh, he was uh, in Stavanger during Norway Chess. So I think he's a friend of Magnus's. I guess there was no point to this story, but... Let's just say that if you have a Norwegian in your team, your chances of not qualifying increases. On the uh, on the other hand, I I guess the US soccer team does have an Icelandic guy. Uh, so my my arguments might just be Silly. Uh, Eirik asks, can you tell me who is next? So next is Magrashin. Uh, and after that we have Sindra. And then we have Kaida. 
Uh, I do not have anything that resembles Eirik on my list. Yeah, th there there is an Icelander in the U.S. team. So my my whole argument of you cannot qualify to the World Cup with a Norwegian might be silly, seeing as how you have an Icelandic guy. So, and those guys are just you know vicious beasts, always qualifying for things. Actually, today's game is Iceland's first game in the in the World Cup ever. It's the first time they qualify. But even though it's the first time they qualify, I mean, people are saying that they can make something happen in a, in a very tough group. So that's going to be exciting to follow. Uh, let's exchange queens. I'm all for that. Exchanging bishops. Yes, please. And let me just grab that central pawn. So that now white has two pawns. I'm one pawn up, but also one of the black pawns is doubled. So we, with these two pawns in the center, I'm expecting to win the game pretty handily. Let's go here, actually. Chris, you did have an attack going. I was nervous there at some point. Uh, but I just barely managed to uh, push your uh, your rook back, and after that, I felt more in control. Yeah, I do not have your challenge, Eirik. Um, please check your um, outgoing challenges settings. Apparently, some people get. Um, Messed up with, um, oh, now he has b6. Okay, oh, I forgot my knight. No, I forgot to move my knight. What is going on? I was intending, I was intending to go knight c4 and then a5. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this game just became interesting. I'm a piece down for a pawn. Well, I say interesting, but... I'm not sure how interesting it, it is. I mean, I'm a piece down, so... Normally, I'm just gonna lose. Yeah, okay, I gotta concentrate more. Chess Bay is up and everyone is commenting the hairstyle. I love your hairstyle. Well, thank you. Uh, I had some comments about it earlier. I gave it a name, but at the moment, I do not recall what that name was. The Shuffle? The Shake. Yeah, I think I called it the Shake. Just shake your hair and hope for the best good morning calculated blunder and our ashers is in the house okay so I'm a piece down for nothing but I remain optimistic without cause because my opponent has done a very good job of eliminating uh, the uh, my pawns on the queen side, and has given himself a uh, passed pawn, and I'm gonna lose this game. <sighs> yeah, can I flag him? I think we're playing with increments, so I cannot flag him. I have no words how depressing this is. Oh, we're not playing with increments. We're not playing with increments. I see my chance. I see my chance coming. And actually now I'm winning. I'm winning. That was a quick turnaround. Suddenly I'm winning. Queening a pawn. My majority on the king side did its job in the end. 
and I made the comeback. End games, says Chespe. We have the Chess TV squad arriving. Uh, Ashiel also in the house now. Swindles are allowed. Uh, if you want to challenge me, I'm going to post some uh, links you can just click on and they should work to uh, put you in the queue for a game. Brutal says Ibrahim. Yeah. I'm not taking prisoners. Even with a piece down. It was a bit unnecessary. I'll give you that. Blundering that piece was not my finest moment. Okay, so I'm going to play h3 and then rook d1 and try to go e5 at some moment. But now I have to change my plans. Now I want to go g4, g5. Maybe even here. g4, g5 and taking control over this. This is a very nice square, but first I got to kick out this knight. Mission accomplished. Knight on d5. Feeling pretty good. Let's get a rook to support. And let's just cash in on all the pieces I'm going to have. First a pawn, then an exchange. That's one happy night, says Chessically Inclined. Yes, yes, that is true. Okay, next up is Kaida from uh, Malaysia. Just double checking that my flag knowledge is up to date. Um, Chris, we already did a game, so the next guy in the line is going to be UNC. Uh, Rabbit King, can you see my challenge? Yes, you are number two in the line. It would appear that Kada is not with us. So we're going to play against UNC. Always when I see this username, I want to see, uh, I want to say uncle. Uh, but there are no L's and E's. So maybe that's too much. Uncle. Hello, says Og Poet. <laughs> Vertrich is being pretty ruthless this morning. Mr. Hammer, being a professional player with chess studies, how do you feel when you see people without studies challenge you and playing so poorly? Do you laugh? Do you feel sad for them? Um, no, I do not laugh. I do not feel sad for them. Uh, I think I'm better at them in chess. And then I'm pretty sure that they are better at me than me at other things. 
So right now we're doing my domain and that's where I get to look like a complete genius. So I I'm just happy and looking really, really clever. Um, I think, uh, says that on mobile, I think the challenge is auto disconnect after some minutes, if not accepted. Um, I don't know, but I'm happy to, after this game, I'll do a little break, read some chat, and then we can try have you challenge and, and get the, the next game. Um, I'm not going to rematch Kada, but you are welcome to. Uh, I'm going to post the uh, commands for challenging Blitz or Bullet. Wow, Alec TV saying that Guitar Hero is his best game. I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming. Better than Fortnite. Wow. Chess Bay wants to humil humiliate me in poker. Yeah. I but yeah, it wouldn't be much of a challenge, but I guess that is the point. Let's uh let's retreat something. Hmm, my pieces are a bit clumsy. They're not really threatening anything or doing anything useful at all. And at the same time, Black is just going to come with his pieces to good squares. Okay, I think I'm actually going to prevent B5. And then I'm going to put the bishop out here on F3. Aquila beat uh, Chirilla. That's pretty good. I heard he was working with uh, Fabiano before the uh, candidates tournament. So uh, you beat a second to a world championship candidate. If he wins the championship, then I mean, you can live off that for the rest of your life. Uh, do you do private lessons, asks the poet. Um, no, I do not. Okay, I'm going to get my bishop out here, getting control over some very nice dark squares. Okay, I should have taken this first. That was a bit of a mistake. That was a huge mistake, actually. I really should have taken that bishop. Mm, yeah. So I went from having a massive position to having nothing special. Just because I was so obsessed with getting my bishop out there. Mm, let's try to get this guy into the center. Uh, yes, please let me put my knight on d5 
and show what a well-poised knight can accomplish. And I think there's checkmate incoming taking after taking the rook. Okay, next up, a Dane. You would think all the Danes were busy being out in the streets yelling or watching big screen TVs or something. Uh, their game is starting in 40 minutes, but here we have Xernix in the house to play some chess before the big matchup. Let's see, Denmark are playing Peru which is uh, going to be one of the most important games of that group. Peru having a fantastic qualifying um, in South America. Uh, have you ever played Carlson? asks Rapid King. Yes, yes, I have. As a matter of fact, the last time I played Carlson, um, I won. Normally, when I tell that story, people don't believe me, but you're very, very welcome to look it up. Norway Chess 2015. Getting that win with the black pieces, no, with the white pieces against what was at the time the current world champion. He still is, so I mean, I'm just... Yeah. Mm. Let's take this one. Hammer's sister gave him a huge hug after. Yeah, that was a good moment. This seems like the queen and bishop have found themselves on an unfortunate diagonal. Messi just missed a penalty. Well, I'm assuming they're going to win the match anyhow, right? Okay, I'm actually going to go... Wow, and our, the, the Norwegian state broadcaster still hasn't fixed the problem uh, the, uh, with the stream. So I actually cannot watch the match uh, because the streaming is down and I do not own a TV. Now, I know there's Americans watching, but yes, it is possible not to own, own an, uh, a TV. Wow, Iceland equalized and then Messi misses the penalty. Wow, that sounds like a fantastic game. Uh, I'm a bit angry right now about the, uh, the stream not working. Let's go here. Zernix, let's hope Denmark plays better against Peru than I did against Hammer. That was painful, he says. Yeah, let's hope. My favorite player is um, is playing for Denmark. Christian Eriksen. That is an all-round great player person, is my impression. Let's go here, trying to go B5. The knight d5, trying to do some exchanges. Uh, what position am, am I in the queue, asks Yudai. You're number two. Number two in the queue. Okay, so take this one. What next? I 
think I'm just going to play b6 and have the option of putting the bishop on a6, uh, protecting my pawn. Uh, Spurs fan asks Chris, um, yeah, maybe a little bit. I don't really have a team in England, uh, but I really like Ericsson. So in, in terms of being fond of Ericsson, I'm a, I'm a Spurs fan. And, and also, I think the, 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 the soccer they've been playing the, the past two seasons have been phenomenal. So I guess I'm also a Pochettino fan. Uh, but more the individual guys than the team itself, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I made a lot of mistakes in the game I played as a 12-year-old or 13-year-old. That doesn't come as a shock to me, Rapid King. Okay, the knight is threatened, which probably means it's a good idea to move it. On the other hand, there's some nasty checkmating threats coming up with the bishop and the queen. So let's do that. Carlson was also 13 at that time. Yeah, I know. There's a difference between me being a 20, 50 um, rated 13-year-old um, and Magnus being at 2,500. But yeah, I, I understand that we were both the same age, but Magnus was pretty good as a kid in my defense. Timothy, that was horrible, he says. I was watching you win with a piece down when my computer rebooted. I'm sorry. It was, uh, it was a bit of a swindle. It was not my proudest moment. But it was a good swindle. Yeah, no, I, 2050 is, is pretty good, but I, like I said, Magnus was, Magnus wasn't even 13 and he was more uh, over 2,500. So, I mean, he's just on a completely different level. In the US, there's so many guys who's 2,200 even before they're 10 years old, it is my impression. I mean, I have the impression that there's so many U.S. kids being complete beasts really early on and then kind of fading away or something. I, I get the impression that in the U.S. chess is more of a CV tool, kind of that you need to have something nice to have to kind of show when you're applying for colleges and high school and, and stuff like that. And therefore, there's a lot of really good players who basically stop playing when they start when they start high school. I'm sure that there are Americans in the chat who has an opinion on precisely this. Uh, Exernix. Uh, says, I'm very happy to see both you and Grandelius playing in the ExtraCon Open. I think it's time you win it outright. You've been close the last few years. Um, yeah, I wasn't close last year, but I was very close two or three years ago. Uh, I would very much like to win it outright, but it's a tough tournament. There's there's a couple of good players. Somehow the extra con cup has a tendency of always having a lot of draws towards the end. Um, and I, myself included, I haven't been able to win 
the important games, the last round events, the, the last round games in that tournament for uh, for some time. Okay, actually, I'm going to take... What am I going to take? I'm going to do this. RJ Thomas says that there was a kid who goes to my high school who was 2000 rated in seventh grade and he hasn't played since entering high school. So I guess that's a uh, story uh, confirming my suspicions. And to be honest, doing well in school is more actually I had G5 there. G5 would have been pretty good. Okay, I got I got another chance. G5 is good. And then bishop d3. Um, yeah, my impression is that in the US, you care a lot about school. Which, honestly, is a good thing. Because uh, I don't think playing chess is going to do much for your life in general. I mean, it's it's nice. I love chess, but there's a lot of people who are now professional chess guys who could have done more useful things with their lives. Uh, Ayrik uh, asks, who do you think is the most promising upcoming chess talent in Norway now? Tari. Um, yeah, I guess, but I mean, you're talking about the current world junior champion. It's kind of tricky for me to talk about him as if he's a talent, right? I mean, he, he's already an, a pretty strong grandmaster. Uh, so I, I would go a little bit beyond calling him a talent. I, I'd say he's pretty good. Do you know Nihail Sarin? asks Rapid King. Yes, I do, unfortunately. Uh, during the course of 2018, I have lost one game. And that was to the little Indian kid, Sarin. I, was, I had a much better position. I should never have lost that game. But that's a different story. He is the one player who has managed to defeat me so far this year. Uh, Eirik says, I mean, he can be number one in the future. Um, yeah, I, I don't see that happening. I don't think he's close to being strong enough. But I don't know. He, he is the world junior champion. So, I mean, that's a huge accomplishment. But at the same time, there are j other juniors who are as young or younger than him. Uh, who have more than a hundred rating points uh, on on him? So, I think having expectations for Aryan to be a a world class player is a bit too soon. Uh, but he can get there. He's gonna he's gonna have an opportunity. I think. Well, I think everyone thought that him winning the world junior champion was gonna give him some opportunities he wouldn't otherwise have gotten. Uh, and then the Norwiches organizers came and said that, no, 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 we want to be the strongest. And that makes no sense. Because even though they have been so obsessive about inviting only the top guys, um, something like the Sinkfield Cup uh, or, or some other tournament in the Grand Chess Tour, uh, if they can get Magnus to participate, they're going to be even stronger than than Norway chess because they have Giri, they have uh, Kramnik. So, um, yeah, Norway chess didn't invite Aryan and they might not even manage to be the strongest uh, tournament of the year. Uh, who's next? It's Yudai. Nice mate, I liked it, says Vertrich. Thank you. Sarin is number one. 
under 14. Yeah, he's pretty good. I still think that I should have won that game, but... <laughs> yeah, I lost, so there goes that. Yeah, I also wish Norway Chess had different priorities, but what am I going to do? I'm just a guy having opinions with no power. If you haven't already, I strongly recommend you read my latest blog on uh, knockouts in chess. I uh, uh, One of my suggestions for the uh, FIDE Grand Prix uh, for the next cycle uh, is being considered. It's being considered as the system uh, for the next FIDE Grand Prix. So my idea is that you have you have the four events like you had in 2017. So you have the four events, uh, but this time uh, you have it in a knockout format. So you start out with 32 players. The first event uh, is gonna um, is gonna be 32 players knockouts, uh, one knockout round. So uh, there's gonna be a knockout with 32 players, 16 qualify to the next event, and then the second uh, FIDE Grand Prix event would be uh, the 16 winners. Uh, playing each other one match uh, and then the eight winners of that would play the next event uh, and I, I think it's um, I think the knockout can, can be nice in solving some of the issues we're having with uh, with a bit of um, fightless draws I'm good. Pito. How are you? Vincent Kamer. He looks like an interesting player for the future as well, says Zernix. Zernix, you're Danish. You should be talking about the Danish guys. I mean, Nor Norway has leapfrogged everyone for some time. But now, suddenly, the Danes have two... European champions among their ranks. The Denmark got both the under uh, 14 and the under uh, 18 uh, European cha youth champions for um, for 2017. So that's pretty big news for them, and a bit out of nowhere, I would say, but it's good. Vertrich is <laughs> unhappy about his play in the first game, uh, but says that he just ate a banana, so he's ready for a rematch. Uh, do you do this stream often? Asks uh, Chris. Uh, I'm going to link you to my uh, schedule. I have pretty regular streams, uh, but this kind of playing with, with viewers is... Um, uh, it's like once a month and then I have a lot of other streams playing against uh, especially in the Arena King tournaments sure they don't have world champion uh, potential but that's the thing about kids right I mean we can this is why I'm actually I dislike the media always talking about kids the reason media likes kids is that they, they can say that they have potential uh, but the fact of the matter is that there's tons of people who have potential. Um, there's just not everyone is going to make it. Not everyone can be the next world champion. And yet the media always promotes like 10 different guys as the next big thing. Uh, so in my opinion, it doesn't really make sense 
uh, to talk about world championship potential before you're 16, I'd say, in, in chess. So for the the Indian kids, such as Sarin and um, and even Kamer, uh, I'm going to reserve judgment uh, until they get a little bit older. And I mean, they can be world-class chess players without being a world champion. Uh, do you live in Oslo? Asks Megash. Yes, yes, I do. You're so ruthless, says Yudai. Yeah, that was that was a one-way street. Uh, I was very... When I got this bishop a4 threat, you really needed to stop that. Maybe try to play a4, gaining control over that square. Because once I get bishop a4, it's just everything is pointing towards your king and your queen. And it's just... So dangerous uh, on so many um, many directions. Um, Eirik, uh are you in the chat? Are, were you saying you are Eric Oslo? Because I can see the Eric Oslo challenge. If you try it one more time, I'm gonna I'm gonna get your challenge. Um, Ashers asks, what about Prago? I mean, you mean, I assume you mean uh, Pragnanandandha? Probably butchering any pronunciation there, but uh, I, I'm going to say the same thing. Um, I'm going to give him a couple more years and see where he's at when he's, uh, he's 16. I don't think it makes any sense making judgment on, on players that are 13. Uh, I think as long as you're rated worse than me, we're not going to talk about you being a future world championship challenger. You got to be better than me and then I'll discuss it. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to discuss a baby chess bay. Come on. Uh, did you hear the Oslo Art School burned down? N no. I, I heard there was a fire at Architecto School. In. I think I read it before going to sleep last night. That there were fire trucks and stuff. But none of the... I haven't seen any newspapers... I'm going to have to check the N Norway headlines. No, I don't see anything. Are you saying architecture school and burned down? How could anybody be better than you? Crazy talk, says Timothy. Oh, you flatter me. Good to know, Hammer sets the bar for future world champs. Yeah, no, not even the bar for future world champs, just discussing future world champs. If you cannot beat me, you cannot be world champion. Uh, most, moist, mo moist, moist, says that, I guess you're talking about my Pragnanandan says that it's the best way you could pronounce it being from the west yeah pragnanand but there's something after that as well i think it's a very difficult name Um, Chess Bay says you have insight into Sam Shanklin. Can he crack the top 20? Um, I, I think both Sam and I agree that it's one 
hell of an adventure he's on right now. Um, I did not think he could crack 2720, and especially not in the fashion he's done it. I mean, yes, he has a rating of 2720, but his performances have been 2800 in more than one tournament. I mean, like two, three tournaments in a row. Um, so I don't believe Sam can consistent, consistently be in the top 20, but if he can crack it, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm not going to say anything against Sam at the moment because he's winning everything. How can you say that a guy who's winning everything he participates in is not going to crack the top 20? Um, he's on fire and, uh, and I, I, I don't think it can last for the next 10 years, but right now, sure. He can crack the top 20. I'm actually going to check where he's at. Sam Shanklin, we're talking about, uh, a good friend of mine. So he's 13 points behind Navara on 20. It's going to be so difficult. Those 13 points are huge, but he's at 27, 27 and yeah, he's, he's winning everything he's participating in. So who knows? Uh, Megash asks, do you think you can get to the 2700 club? Uh, Chess Bay uh, comments that I was once for a very brief amount of time. Um, I think I can get back to 2700. I'm not entirely sure, but I would think so. Um, if for no other reason that there's some kind of inflation and stuff going on, I think think but on the other hand while i think there's inflation in the rating system my rating has deflated pretty significantly the last two years so um i have been over 2700 i think i can do it again but it's very tricky prag prag ananda says holyfield that's a pretty yeah, I think if you just break it down, it should be possible. I think if he, if he establishes himself in the, in the the elite, uh, I think people will learn how to pronounce Prag Ananda. It's the same thing with Nepomniachi, right? I mean, I have no problems saying Nepomniachi. I have no problems with Krivochko. It's one of the, I mean, there's lots of people with difficult names and you just, when they are a regular elite fixture, then you kind of learn how to say the names. Um... Rapid King asks, can you see my challenge? I think we already played a game. I can see your challenge, but I think we already played a game. Okay, next up is Tulipen. Tulipen. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Yeah, same with Vishwanathan. I mean, Vishwanathan, I have no problem saying. And it's kind of scary when you see the letters for the first time, but... You get used to it. Yeah, no, there's still people not having had a single game, Rapid King. So I'm keeping you in the queue uh, while I dispense of new challengers. Okay, Amund says that we say Vishy instead of Vishwanathan. Yeah, I guess that's true, but... If you put some effort in, I, I don't think Vishwanathan would be such a big problem. Mm. 
which rook to take back with. Okay, so I removed the defender. So the queen was protecting the pawn on b3. I removed the defender. And then I took it. And then I blundered a piece, but I'm getting away with it because I can move my bishop and threaten a rook. I guess we're gonna do some checkmating tricks. No. Ooh, I actually blundered a piece. That was. He could have just taken on c7. Did Messi miss a second penalty? I really need to get this game back up. But now it's even headlines. While I was trying to search for this place that had, had burned down, <laughs> the headlines that were on the top of the Norwegian newspapers were that the, the broadcast for NRK is failing. So I'm definitely not the only one being upset about not getting to see the game. Ah, and now you can see it on TV too. That's brilliant. They had to let their competitor broadcast the match uh, because they were having issues with their broadcast. Okay, three minutes left and Iceland is still 1-1 against Argentina. That is huge. In my defense, I did first, when first asked, I did say that I was cheering for Iceland. Oh, no spoilers, please. I'm, I'm watching it on a stream, so I have a one-minute delay. No game ma soccer ma game spoilers in the chat. I will time you out. Okay, next up is Holyfield. Uh, the web broadcast for NIK is not working, which is what I'm looking at. Uh, the black ones are uh, Argentina. Okay, I was thinking this is pretty good. Okay, let's castle. Okay, the Icelandic goalkeeper just caught the ball. Uh, I don't know how much of a delay I have, but... On my game clock, it's plus 3 minutes 45 at the moment. So, two more minutes, or one and a half actually. Messi has the ball, that's always pretty frightening. Oh, Messi dribbles, Messi dribbles, gets the free kick. Final free kick chance. Oh, and the Argentine. Argentinian players are complaining about the free kick not being close enough to the goal. They believe they believe the foul happened further up the pitch. Okay, I would say it's about 27 meters. Ooh, I can trap a knight. Good news on two fronts right now. This knight is in big trouble. I think it's going to have to go back to h6. Then maybe queen a3, intending queen or rook c1. Now I'm going to go queen e3, threatening this. Oh, a terrible free kick. 
terrible free kick straight into the Icelandic wall. And the referee blew the final whistle. Iceland has played 1-1 against Argentina. That is huge. And my opponent blundered a piece. That's also good news. Okay, I'm gonna go here because this rook is hanging. Iceland holding on to a draw against Argentina. That is, uh, wow, that's pretty good. And Messi misses a penalty when the score was 1 1. Quite some headlines coming out now from Russia. go here yeah I in, in in soccer it's not called a draw maybe it's called a tie I don't even know it is a draw says rapid king okay Messi missed a penalty, asks Floyd. Yeah, that is what I hear. I didn't get to see it because my provider was not providing. Uh, but the rumor says that Messi messed up. And now I'm going to get a new queen. It's called a draw in the group stages and a tie when you have eliminators. That I did not know. That's actually kind of interesting. Okay, next up is Mateus Enrique from uh, Brazil. And the next game is not going to start for another hour. So I guess I'm going to shut down my soccer window. Messi messed up. Yeah, I kind of like that one, Emba. I was pretty happy with that one. I was hoping someone would, you know, notice. Uh, Hammer, are you going to watch the Denmark game? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm not going to watch the first half because uh, I'm doing the stream. Uh, but I'm going to be watching the second half. Bye, Frank. I hope you enjoyed. Come back to uh, on Monday for the Arena Kings tournament. Holyfield is trying to find out what I did, what he did wrong. You challenged me to a game of chess. That's what you did wrong. Uh, does Denmark play next? Asks Vertwich. Yes. I'm streaming another one and a half hours. Denmark game starts in an hour. I'm actually... Matthias is playing pretty well. It's a tense game so far. I'm going to play B5. Trying to create some open files for my rook. Get some pressure on that queen side. <laughs> v Miles apologizes for the fake news. I misheard Glasgow as Oslo. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, any Glaswegians, for your art school burning down. But um, I guess it's nice that it didn't happen in in Oslo. So there's there's that. Uh, has anyone lower than fifteen hundred beaten you on stream? Asks Mickey Mouse. Uh, I think so. 
I think so, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe there are some loyal viewers who know the answer to that question. So I'm going to kick this knight back. Where am I going to play this? I'm actually going to go here first. Then see what he does with this kind of threat. Because I'm also tempted just to take on c4 and go a4. If I go a4, I'm kind of concerned about b4. But for no reason, I should just go a4. Aquila has his ambitions in order. He's going to be the world's best 1200 player and he's going to beat me on stream. That's pretty ambitious. Okay, so I actually discovered that this knight doesn't have a lot of escape squares. So if I now go b4, I'm actually threatening e6, trapping the the knight. And he felt like he needed to give the knight a square on e3, but then I'm able to put my knight in a commanding position uh, on the middle of the board. So that's good. And then I'm going to play f5, being aggressive on both sides of the board. Knight c2, I'm going to play knight queen f6. I'm not sure that was a good idea, but yeah, maybe he has queen d4. Okay, I'm going to go rook a8, trying to trick him. I want him to go e5. So e5 is going to win an exchange, but it's going to massively ruin his, his king position. Actually, even takes an f5, does the same trick. But I'm just going to take back, sacrifice that rook, and get my bishop on the long diagonal uh, towards his king. Thinking about it, I realize it's not a good plan, but it was enough to scare my opponent. And there, Matthäus blunders as the rook is hanging on a1 and it is being uh, threatened by both the queen and my rook. Ooh, the rook needs to go back, but then there's another pin. Pins galore, both sides of the board. Ooh, and now e3 with the threat on the long diagonal. And Matthäus resigns. Next up, Bazinga. Thanks for the game master, says Mythshinrik. You're welcome. Uh, how can I play with you? asks Pro Jellyman. And uh, Chess Bay is providing a link. So this link, as long as you're logged into your chess.com account, you challenge me just by clicking uh, the link from uh, from Moobot. You can also challenge me to a one minute game. If that is your preferred poison. Ooh, Bazinga! I predicted your move and I prevented it. Uh, 
I'm just gonna get my pieces out. Bishop d7, queen e7. I I would really like to get my queen here. Also, I'm gonna stop this threat. That's pretty scary. Threatening mate in one. But it's stopped. Thank you to Holyfield with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you. Emba says that I think Denmark should buy Neymar. That'd be something. I guess rook b5 is coming, trying to get the rook over to the attack. But I'm feeling pretty safe with my king. That's how it works, right? Says Emba. Yeah. We could all do with some Brazilians on our soccer team. I actually played some soccer with a Brazilian grandmaster, um, Andre Diamond. I haven't actually Diamant. I mean, uh, I actually haven't seen him around lately. He, he, I think he was going to Webster at some point. But yeah, it's something you should do in your life. Play soccer with a Brazilian. Jameson is next up. And this is quite the flag quiz as well. Uh, this is one of the most unusual flags. I want to say that this is Taipei or, or something like that. Taiwan, tai, Taipei. Um, blue with a star-ish thing, red. Okay, I think I'm, I'm not gonna, I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm not gonna have a chance. Ah, Taiwan. I got it. I got it. Feels good. Feels good, man. Super nice GM playing fans on a funny stream. Totally deserved the sub, says Holyfield. Thank you, man. I very much appreciate it. Uh, Jameson did not make it to the game, but he did provide a very nice quiz with his flag. Next up is Spot. A fourth candidate for FIDE, the World Chess Federation president, says Chess Bay. This is crazy. Yeah, but they say that um, they say that Kirsten is going to withdraw. So it's going to be it's still going to be a three way race between Nigel, uh, the guy the Russian Chess Federation is supporting and Macro. Uh, so. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Can we have a game now? Asks Rapid King. Yeah, no, we already played a game. So I'm going to keep accepting other people's challenges. People who haven't played me one game yet. But I'm keeping your challenge in the list in case um, I kind of get done with uh, playing against people who have already had a game. Uh, Chris writes that I heard, I read Nigel wanted to stop the world championship match. Um, well, Nigel has said he wants to break up the deal with Aegon. Um, and Aegon is organizing the world championship match. So I think Nigel has, hasn't really addressed whether or not he wants to cancel the match since it's being organized by Aegon, or if he just wants to stop the deal with Aegon from one moment. So, I mean, 
if he wants to stop the deal with Aegon, I assume that he he should he should say that okay, we're gonna complete this year's um, championships, and then the deal will be off from January first, two thousand nineteen. I don't know. It's kind of difficult to break up a deal that's not really expiring, right? So Aegon is just consistently uh, working on the events because that's what they have to do. They have to they their their contract is to organize events, and they cannot really just stop planning because one of the candidates, a guy who might not even win, uh, says that he doesn't want to work with them. Um, so yeah. Stuff is going to happen in the world of chess uh, in the very near future. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, why does Nigel want to cancel the deal at all? Asks Armin. Uh, well, I think most people's opinion is that Argon um, are trying to charge uh, spectators for the games which has been very poorly received, to say the least. Um, and they have tried to um, have their... They have tried to legally uh, get their right that they have exclusivity for the moves, uh, for events where they have... Uh, the rights uh, and also I, I think some some people feel that Aegon is not paying enough for the rights that they bought or there's also something about Aegon not having paid what they owe Fide um, so I mean there's I, I don't know what is true and what is not but there's a lot of um, I think general unhappiness uh, with uh, with Aegon. Of course, I'm pretty fond of Aegon at the moment because they are considering my idea for the um, for the FIDE Grand Prix. An idea I think actually is very good. So. If they're going to get kicked out, I hope they get kicked out after uh, implementing the new FIDE Grand Prix. Uh, can I get to play you a game? My username is Shuck, Sh Shuck Hugo asks the rise and the fallen. Yes. Yes, we're going to make that happen. As a matter of fact, I did see you in my list of challengers and you are the next game. So once this game finishes, uh, we're going to play a game, Hugo. Uh, do you do online lessons? Asks Holyfield. No, I do not. Uh, who is this Nigel guy everyone is talking about? Nigel Short. Yes, Nigel Short, the former world championship uh, challenger, is, uh, is standing for election uh, to be the new head of the World Chess uh, Federation. Uh, how to challenge in a live chess? Well, I can give you the link, uh, which if you're logged in to uh, chess.com, these links should um, should be enough to um, to challenge me. A 
Okay, Hugo, get ready. I'm about to checkmate Hamviking. Checkmate some hammer times for the checkmate. The queen in the middle of the board. The most powerful piece at the most powerful square. A fitting way for her to give checkmate. Okay, the Petrov. I'm gonna. Am I gonna play boring? Yes, yes, I am. We're gonna try this opening. So now I have two pieces developed compared to my opponent, but it's a uh, pretty tame position otherwise. So I'm hoping um, to get on the E file the quickest, the, uh, the only open file on the board. Uh, and then I'm hoping that's going to lead to something. Not so long queue, by the way. No, I'm, I'm not on chess TV. Uh, chess.com slash TV. Uh, I'm not there at the moment. So the queue is not as long as it has been some of the other times I've done this. There's currently, actually now there's a bit people, maybe five people in the queue. Uh, Foggle says, thank you, I challenged you. Uh, can I have the next game? Asks Rapid King. No, there's many new challengers. So um, every time there's a new challenger, you fall behind in the um, in the queue. Uh, I challenged about half an hour ago. Says most. Um, what is your username? Because if you challenged half an hour ago, you should have gotten a game. So you might not be on the list. So what is the plan for this position? I guess I'm going to try to double at some point. No, actually, I'm going to try to get my knight up to f4 and make some threats. And then also I'm going to use my pawn. This is a very nice strategy. Having the pawns protect each other. That's basically one of the main strategies in chess. I want to go here, but I think it's not good. So I'm going to go here. Um, yeah, most I do not have your challenge on my list. So something has gone wrong. Try challenging again and try checking your settings uh whether they allow for challenging such a high rated player as myself but you you gotta try again because the challenge hasn't come through uh i'm actually in trouble right now which i'm pretty unhappy about and when i say pretty unhappy i'm more than that So if I go bishop e2, then he has knight g4. And that threatens two of my pawns. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to play the most desperate move you have ever seen. I'm going to play the most desperate move you have ever seen. Okay, actually, Hugo, I tricked you. I tricked you. 
I did this with my arrow, but I actually meant this. Because if you go with this knight, then I win a piece. Uh, that is actually the first instance of streamer trickery on my channel. Actively advocating a bad move. Wow, I'm such a clever guy. I feel very sneaky right now. Oh, I feel very sneaky. I'm actually pretty happy with that. How not to stalemate. That's going to be today's lesson. And I get the game on time. Okay, so let's go back. So I did this. But I, I saw that it was a bad move. What I really was scared of was this move. Because then I don't have F4 pushing away the, the knight that, that's protecting the other knight. So after knight G4, I was intending knight H1. Um, which honestly is basically the only way I can protect this pawn. So it makes some sense. But it's, uh, it's, not, it's one of the more desperate moves. Okay, mo moist, moist. Let's uh, let's do our game. I I trust that you've been waiting for half an hour, so I used my discretion to push you up in the uh, in the queue. This is the flag from Bangladesh. I don't actually know how to play this opening. Let me go here. It's kind of res uh, reminiscent of some kind of French. And now I changed the pawn structure, so black gets the upper hand in the center, but I'm hoping to exploit this square on C5. So I'm gonna kind of place my pieces towards that square. Uh, queen E1, maybe go here. Maybe go here, some options. Hmm. I'm not really thrilled about my position. I thought this was gonna be better for me than it is. Let's try this move. Having this bishop b6 in some some cases. If I'm allowed to, I'm going to play bishop c5. Okay, bishop b6. I was allowed to do that. And then am I gonna take this rook? I kind of want, I kind of want not to do that, because then I lose control of the c5 square. But on the other hand, a rook is a rook. No, I'm not gonna take it. 
I really like my kind of positional pressure of these squares. Actually, maybe that was a blunder. Maybe he can go queen b4. Ah, uh, no, actually, queen b4, b3, d takes e4, a3. Does that trap the queen? It might. It's close. Uh, who would you like to see win the soccer world championship? Um, I'm pretty neutral in terms of that the uh, teams I support are teams that are not going to win the championship. Uh, so teams like Denmark and Iceland are going to be my favorites. And they're not going to win the World Cup. I think, uh, I think that's just not going to happen. Okay, one more hour uh, of the stream. I'm actually getting a little bit hungry. So maybe the guys just joining the party have the biggest possibility of uh, defeating me. Ooh, there goes the bishop. The, the knight blocks the queen's influence. And there goes the rook and the pawn. Lose one thing and the entire house of cards collapses. And Moister resigns. Okay, who's next? Uh, Master in physics. I don't think we played. Good game, says Hamviking, as does Moist. Thank you, guys. I shouldn't have gone for a Sicilian. I don't know. I, I don't think the Sicilian is a bad choice. I think it's, it's decent. I think when playing a high-rated opponent, you should try to make it a bit messy. Because if, if, if you just play some kind of calm position then very often your your opponent is just gonna understand what's happening much better than you whereas in some kind of messy tactical play you might have some some possibilities i mean you'll still be an underdog but suddenly you get a chance and you grab it Uh, Magnus Carlsen, you are on the list. Honestly, I couldn't remember whether I already played a game against Spot. But I thought, if I'm not sure, I'm going to accept it. My wife is Sicilian, says Holyfield. That is kind of funny. The chess player with the Sicilian wife. I guess the follow-up question is, do you play the Sicilian holy field? Always. That makes sense. Um, I'm getting some pawns really limiting my, um, my pieces. My bishop is not feeling good about these white pawns. Let's see if we can break them up at the, uh, 
the hmm that's also a good move spot is playing some good moves knight c6 not so sure about that move yeah but it can't be too bad okay let's see if i can just take this guy Okay, well, then I don't think it was a very good move because now I get a free pawn and I love free pawns. Let's see, let's go back with this queen so that I have the possibility to play c3 in some moments uh, when I need to chase away this knight. Let's go back. Partly, oof. I don't think I can talk myself out of this one, but I can talk myself out of taking this rook. I think if I take this rook now, it's gonna be kind of dangerous. It's gonna be kind of dangerous. So I'm just gonna play c6, kicking this knight away. In other news, uh, I played my first round of cards, what was it called? Cards Against Humanity last night. That apropos my, my yawning. Uh, and I won my very first round. I was really happy with that. I had some good ones. I, I had some pretty good ones. I, I took a picture of it. I'm going to find some of the sentences I constructed. Okay, he doesn't even want my rook. But I'm just going to keep offering. Probably he's going to take it sooner or later. Let's go here. So I don't know if there's an etiquette for what you put on the... Uh, where you're, you're supposed to input your kind of word. So I'm just going to read it as something. Whenever there's a blank, it's, I'm going to read it as something. So one of the cards was, what is George W. Bush doing right now? And I used the card, fading away into nothingness. Uh, and then... Uh, yeah, that one I'm maybe going to censor. Um, what would grandma find disturbing yet oddly charming? And I played teaching a, Robert, uh, a, a robot to love, which I thought was very good. Uh, and then we have me playing the card, not giving a shit about the third world. It's a slippery slope that leads to, and then I played landmines. I thought that was pretty good. And then I'm going to have to censor the last one as well. Uh, but my point was, uh, it was fun. So what is the... No, we cannot do that. I, I discovered that people have a wicked sense of humor. And by wicked, I don't mean the British wicked, uh, but I just mean the sick, sick humor. Chess Bay with the thousand bit, with the thousand bit chair in Iceland's honor. Also because Aquaman can't always be first. 
Um, thank you for the thousand bits and congratulations to all all Icelanders. Uh, I'm guessing you're not. There's not any Icelanders watching this stream because they're too busy being out in the streets celebrating the fact that they made a draw against Argentina in their first ever World Cup match. I mean, one thing is Iceland making a draw, but this was their first ever match in the World Cup. So that's pretty good. And Truce Kane with the hundred bits, thank you. Let's see if uh, if I can checkmate this guy. Ooh, I can, and the knights are working so beautifully together, constructing that checkmate. And thank you, Chess Bay, for donating a sub to Truce Kane. Uh, next up is Pac-Man Pal. I'm, I'm accepting challenges in the order in which they came. So if I'm not accepting your challenge, it's probably because you're not at the top of my list. some hammers from chess bay let's uh let's do some flags actually norway is not in the world cup but we still watch it religiously and we look for anything with a norwegian connection so basically today there's a it's a huge day for soccer uh for for norway because there's a norwegian who is the a coach for the Danish national team and they're playing they're playing in 20 minutes against Peru and there's on the Icelandic team there's so many of, of the players who played in the Norwegian league uh, so all in all today has been uh, a pretty big day for the news media uh, writing about all the people with connections to Norway who are participating in the World Cup. We might not be there, but we're certainly writing about it. Mm. Yeah, I need a plan. I need a plan. Should I sacrifice? Maybe. There, 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 there. That could could work. Okay, let's go for it. What is that emote? GM can't gang gang. Ah, uh, gang gang. I don't even know what that means. Can someone explain to me what gang gang means? Iceland's coach is from Sweden. Um, is he? I thought we stole the Iceland coach. I thought the Norwegian national team stole the Icelandic coach. He's ours now. Okay, so this sequence worked out horrendously for me. Uh, I'm not sure why I thought this was a good idea. I guess I'm going to go... Uh, I'm unhappy about my position. I'm actually hoping that my opponent plays a2 because I don't think that pawn, even though it's one square aw away from queening, I don't think it's going to survive. 
and I would prefer to ruin his pawn structure. So a2 is very critical, but okay, he's not even considering it. I guess I'll have to take this one. I have a passed pawn on the A file and I have the bishop pair. Actually, right now I'm suddenly winning, but I was not too happy with my position just a few moments ago. It turns around quickly in chess. Let's go with my bishop here, protecting this important pawn. And thank you for the knight. I'm happy to take your pieces. Yes, Summer is in the chat confirming the fact that we, the Norwegians, stole the Icelandic coach, the Icelandic Sweden, Icelandic, Iceland's Swedish coach. Uh, we stole. We're not having a lot of success with him, but we did win two matches in a row which is uh, enough to generate some high, uh, some headlines in Norway. That's the level our, our soccer team is at. When we win two games in a row, we go pretty crazy. It was actually pretty two pretty good wins. One of them was against Panama, who's in this championship. And the other one was against, mm, I don't remember. Ah, uh, it's just good game. I should have been able to guess that. Okay, so I have something going on on the F file. Let's see what we can make of this. The little threat of knight h6. Okay, prevented. But there's other things going on on the F file. How about this move? With this move. And then that move. This is a good move. If king h8, I'm going to play queen takes e5. That's going to be pretty sweet. King g7, that is some brave, brave stuff going on. Very brave. King g7. Huh. I guess I'm going to go here. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing now. Maybe that was a mistake. King g7, it's such a brave move. <sighs> yeah, actually this bishop move was a mistake. I'm just going to go back. It looked tempting, but... It didn't really accomplish anything. Now bishop g5. No. Actually, this knight might be in trouble. This went pretty bad pretty quickly. I don't understand how did... What did... I'm confused. I'm confused. I thought I had a fantastic position and suddenly I'm playing defensive moves. Amund! Hi Yoon, can I have a game? Yeah, just uh, provide a challenge and we'll try to get to you. 
Uh, there's one, two, three people in the queue. So uh, just get that challenge going and we'll, um, we'll do a game. How's it going? Asks Past Pawn. I'm doing okay. I'm actually a bit hungry right now, which confuses me because I had a snack before I started streaming. But other than that, things are good. And Truce Kane is giving me some, uh, Ooh, knight b6, threatening the queen, threatening the rook. That's a nice double threat. Just a free rook. Ooh, and another free rook. Wise words you got there, says Amund. Uh, yeah. Hate is a strong emotion. I think, uh, Truce Kane, I think you're the first one to comment on Moobot's hammer quotes in a very, very, very long time. Chess Bay just put them in there when uh, when we were testing Moobot. But yeah, I don't think I've gotten enough credit for how true those statements are. Hate is a strong emotion to have. Quote, GM Hammer. E5, I'm not sure that's a good idea. I think it's weakening the light squares and it's going to give my bishop some very nice possibilities in the future. E5. I, I seriously dislike this move. I think the only way you can justify it now is to play h3, bishop h5, and then something like g4. No, maybe not g4. And then e6. But yeah, I don't think it's very good. You did blunder all your rooks, Austin. You did blunder all your rooks, but that happens. Usually I have some almonds, but I ran out of almonds as well. So my hunger is really getting to me. Rooks are all over the board, ready to be taken. Well, especially when I play against them. Okay, Swedish champion 2020. If that is your ambition, I'm afraid it's not going to work out for you. Because this bishop takes f3 tactic, you really should have seen before. That is one of the oldest tricks in the book. And here I sit with an extra bishop. Uh, is this on chess TV as well? No, I was a bit late booking my chess TV time for June. So... Um, there weren't any good spots open at this point. Do you never lose? Asks Guy Drones. Um, I do lose quite a bit. Uh, but the thing is that 
I lose to very strong players. I don't lose that often when I'm a heavy favorite. And right now I'm playing against people who are rated like a hundred points lower. You can see these numbers, 1800 and 2600. Uh, those are rating numbers. And it basically uh, means that the higher the number, the better the player. And uh, I'm so good at chess that I rarely lose to people with a uh, number 100 below mine. Okay, now I'm just gonna push this guy as far as he goes. I said I was gonna do that, but I changed my mind. Not sure why I didn't go um, rook h5, but it's fine. It's fine. Ooh, f5 there would have been a sneaky pre move. Uh, we played, we played, we played. Kim Jong Un from Sierra Leone. You are next up. I think it's Sierra Leone, but I'm I'm gonna check. Anyone wanna guess or bet whether this is the flag of Sierra Leone? Devisario joins us. Iceland Argentina one one. Yeah, no, that was spectacular. That was spectacular. Uh, I did uh, not see that coming. But Iceland was doing so well in the European Championship two years ago. So they're creating a bit of a buzz with uh, multiple sens uh, sensational results in a row. A hundred. I did say a hundred. I meant a thousand. I'm sorry, Mr. Burns. I get my uh, zeros confused. There is a thousand points of a rating difference. That 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 is absolutely correct. Okay, I'm going to check the flag. Oof. I'm very happy today. I got both the Sierra Leone and the uh, Taiwan flag. So I got two pretty, pretty good ones today. If you want to see Hammer lose, you need to tune in to Arena Kings. Uh, I would, I would be more upset if it wasn't true. And uh, since it is true, I'm, I'm just depressed. Yeah, come back on a Monday and, and you'll see me lose a couple of games. I struggle. In the Arena Kings format. You know your flags, Mr. Hammer, says Past Pawn. Yes, I do. And I take pride in it. So your recognition is appreciated. Okay, so we don't have a lot of pieces left. But I'm a pawn up. All the pawns are on the same side, which means it's a kind of position that often ends up just being a draw. So the question is how to avoid that happening. Uh, well, that was a good start. 
I'm not sure it's easy to win with a pawn up. Winning with a piece up is considerably easier. And my opponent had a bad moment in which he just left one of his pieces to be taken. And I, I'm not going to say no to that. Ooh, and now we get the fork. So now it's a rook up. The uh, North Korean dictator does seem to collapse a little bit. Played a good game for a long time, but then suddenly everything just went awry. We have a Bieber fan in the house. And that is my next opponent. Let's go C4. Let's go E3 and do a fianchetto on the queen side. Tricky flag again, says Mr. Burns. Yeah, no, the, 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 the Scandinavian flags, I got under control. Fellow believers, it's been a while, says Amund. Are you saying there aren't enough believers in the world right now? Such a shame. Do you recommend queenside fianchetto versus the Slav? Um, no, not really. I'm just playing around. Do as I say, not as I do, right? No, wait. Yeah. What game collections do you recommend for lower rated players? Um, I don't know. Game collections already is pretty advanced in my opinion. I think if you have the, um, if you have the temperament to play through lots of games, then I would kind of assume you're not, you're not a beginner because that's pretty it's not advanced, but for you to be interested in that means that your your interest in chess is well be above average. Okay, it seems like Chess Bay has a suggestion. Um, I'm gonna say that. Um, I really like the, the Road to Chess Improvement by uh, Yermolinsky. I think that was one of my, uh, my favorite books uh, as I was improving. It's not a, really a game collection. Well, it's kind of a game. It's, yeah. It, it's a book that cannot really be defined. It's a bit of everything. But I think mostly it's just... A couple of Yermolinsky's own games uh, with commentary. I can tell you what my first game collection was. Uh, I know that Magnus is very fond of the uh, Kramnik game collection, but my first collection was uh, Shirov, Fire on Board. Which is kind of ironic because my playing style is nothing like that. But when I was a kid, you know, I was attracted to this kind of exciting chess. And then as I grew older, I decided that my heart isn't, isn't built for exciting. 
Amun says, I have a challenge for you. Listen to Optimist by Jan Teigen on high volume a hundred times in a row. Uh, did you read the, the Yodel? There was some guy who had been playing Optimist really loud. And he, let's just say that the police got involved. So I, I don't want to get a visit from the Popo. That is a, um, the mentalist reference, actually. Patrick Jane at some point calling his colleagues the Popo. I don't know if that's a normal, normal US term. Go Denmark, says Aquila. And with that reminder, it's time to take a little break from the chess and do some soccer commentary. Uh, but first off, I should find my uh, stream of the game. And we're off. Peru against Denmark. I assume Christian Eriksen is playing. So I'm going to keep an eye out for that game. So every time I blunder, I'm going to have that as an excuse. Come on, the Danes get the Viking helmet? That makes no sense. The Danes... Uh, Chespe, can you do the Icelandic emote? I mean, I... I was speaking to Peter Heine the other day and he was like, oh yeah, no, the Danes, we were the Vikings and so on. And I was like, well, yeah, but you were more like the merchant Vikings. I mean, you were not the cool Vikings. Illegal restream, what could go wrong? Well, I'm st I still have the chess on my screen. I mean, I'm just... Uh, I have a separate screen with the soccer. I think that's completely fine. Wow, that is not very creative. Both Denmark and Sweden and Iceland got Viking helmets? Come on, Twitch. That's just not good enough. I mean... We're more than Vikings. I mean, we have personalities. We have feelings. You're just grouping us together. More emotes for everyone, says Aquila. 150 bits. Thank you, Aquila. And the Russians have some kind of Kossar hat, I guess. Personalities are like what, says Jesus. Yeah. Well, you know. If Norway qualified, I assume that they would just... They would just have like a big dollar sign. That's basically the Norwegian national identity. We don't care about anything because we got tons of cash. Uh, Amund, you're next up. And Namdal allowed me to play bishop e4, the queen and bishop creating threats against the black king. I don't see how you're going to survive this one. You really should have tried to exchange queens in that position. And it's checkmate on the board. And Amun, you're next up. Chespe promised you will provide commentary about the Peru Denmark game. Uh, I can make that happen. Um, let me just uh, do this. So, right now. We're looking at some guy named Delaney trying to stop the ball 
on his chest, but using his shoulder instead. And the referee said, no, 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 you're not allowed to do that. And it's a free kick for Peru. Uh, why does Queen F1 not work? Asks Zairi Exi. Uh, if Queen F1, I would have had Queen H1 checkmate. Uh, so I had two big threats, Queen G7 and Queen H1. No, Queen G2 and Queen H1. Calling it a soccer thingy hurts my European heart, says Stylo. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not really sorry. I have an explanation. I haven't, well, explain it. I have an excuse. So I learned English in the US. And so I call it soccer. I, I think that makes, I think, I think it makes sense. Uh, how come Jean wake ups sub didn't make the hammer noise? I think it did. I feel like I heard it. He's on the list at the very least. Thank you, Chess Bay, for um, for gifting the sub. Ah, I should have gone Bishop F3 first. Because now his rook gets some extra escape squares. Ah, uh, move orders. Uh, yeah, that was actually unnecessary. Yeah, bishop f3 first was just so much better. <sighs> Actually, suddenly I'm not too happy about my position. It might be illo just illogical, but I think it has something to do with the fact that I made one pretty big inaccuracy and that kind of just affects my mood and then it affects my confidence in the position also it's because i'm comparing the current position to what i could have had and frankly if i had played bishop f3 the game would have been over uh, whereas now i'm a little bit better i have the bishop pair well, I'm, I'm probably much better. I, I think my queen c6 move was okay. Because it posed some difficult questions to his bishop. Okay. I guess I have to move the bishop. In order to say that I have the bishop pair. Yeah, I do not like my position again. Ah. Yeah, and I'm getting low on time as well. Okay, in a big display of desperation, Hammer plays his bishop back to where it came from and admits to himself and the world that he just has a crappy position and is hoping to make a draw. That is the current situation, depressing as it is. Trying to grovel for a draw. Yeah, no, Bishop A3, I was concerned about Knight E5. Bishop A3, Knight A. A E five seemed unpleasant in my opinion. Okay, my knight moving up the board. Hopefully able to do something. Now I get this bishop on F five. I probably misjudged the position after D four. But this position, I think, is just good for me. 
I think black should have played d4. But now I just get a huge advantage in the center. I'm, I'm just going to play a bit faster and flag. Flag your opponents. Always a good strategy when everything else fails. Okay, I just lost a pawn. That was my intention. Okay, I won on time, but it was not my greatest game. Uh, I think that's uh, an understatement. Uh, next up is uh, Aryan from the Netherlands. 2200. And I'm still pretty hungry. I'll have to focus for this one. Let's play a boring opening. The Berlin suits my purpose. Good game, Armand. Uh, let's take this one because that is what the good guys are playing. And then attacking the rook, offering the exchange. Uh, do I take back with the queen or the knight? I'm not sure. I'm going to take with the knight so that I'm able to play d5 next. I feel like I played this opening once before. It's not the most exciting opening. I blame the white player. Always blame the white player when it's a boring opening. Peru has three shots to none. I guess that's not too promising if you're a Denmark fan. White actually had the possibility there of going knight g4, which would have been unpleasant for me. So I actually got to watch out. There's some, st I'm actually still worse. There's some unpleasant threats in the position. I'm actually worse. Huh. That comes as a bit of a surprise to me, but let's get this rook to the E file and then see what happens. Hoodfresh is also a Christian Eriksen fan. Well, that makes two of us. Let's get the pieces. Maybe I shouldn't have allowed queen b3. Yeah, that may have been a mistake. Okay, I'll put the bishop back just to protect this guy. And then I'll hopefully claim that the queen isn't really doing much on b3. Okay, let's do the exchange and then just march the pawns up the board. G5 next. And then G4. I forgot this pawn is hanging. I forgot this pawn is hanging. That is horrible. I wanted to take back and then play h3, but I forgot that this pawn is hanging. <sighs> yeah, okay. I'm going to have to quit pretty soon because I, I can feel that this is not going according to plan.
Okay, I'm, I'm gonna sacrifice this guy now. Hoping to get some counterpoy with the queen. Stepping into d2. But honestly, I don't see how it's happening. I think he's pretty brave to take that pawn, but it's a good decision. Ooh, and now threatening queen e5. That's pretty annoying. Let's try this one. I'm in swindle mode. I'm going to flag this guy. I, I have no choice. I did not play this game very well, and now I just got to swindle the guy. An undeserved win is better than no win. Oh, he had king d1. Why did I? I mean, I could have gone queen c1. Queen c1 would have been close to winning, maybe. I don't know. Okay, I tricked him. No, I didn't trick him. Ah, oh, come on! What are you doing, my friend? You're falling for my tricks when I thought you had everything under control. It was not my greatest moment. I think that's putting it mildly. I never lose to lower rated players five minutes ago, says Mr. Burns. Well, I, I was trying to say significantly lower rated players, but yeah, that was, that was very close. That was very close. Uh, at some point, I thought I had an attack going, but it never really materialized. Okay, 12 more minutes. Uh, Black Knight is uh, next up. And then I'm going to have time for one more game after that. A plus flagging, says Hood, Hood Fresh. I don't know. I wouldn't. I would. I would give it a B. B B minus. I don't think the flagging was fantastic either. But at some point, I decided that this is the way I'm going to win the game, and then that's how I won the game. He had checkmate in one move. I mean, at some point, he had queen c7 checkmate. So I mean I had I did not have that game under control. Dirty flag, that is a good use of Botas's emote. That was a proper dirty flag. Okay, Denmark has a corner. The Peru keeper is not being impressive and yet he got a free kick for nothing the peru keeper got a free kick for nothing oh well and i'm getting a lot of free pawns for nothing or free pawns I guess is for nothing is a bit redundant 
John wait job thank you for the commentary you're doing a better job than the broadcasters in the US are you saying that there's people in the US broadcasting my blitz games right now because that I think not a lot of people would watch uh, but yeah thank you for your for your comments Sisto is inside the Peru 16 yard box and now Denmark gets another free kick against them. And Simon Schaag, the tattooed giant of a Dane, looks in dismay. Okay, for once, I think I'm going to have to ag agree with the tattooed soccer player. I think that may have been not a free kick. Ah, oh, John Wake Up is talking about the soccer. Oh, and here I thought you were saying I'm a good chess commentator. My bad. Christian Eriksen in the frame. Are you kidding me? They got a free kick for that as well? Okay, this ref needs to up his game because now he's given like three free kicks in a row to Peru for no reason. Also, in my game, my rook suddenly came into action. My opponent played h3 thinking that he was preventing me from playing g4 and then I played g4 anyhow. Creating quite a bit of trouble. Uh, Hoodfresh asks, what time is the game for you right now? Uh, 21.30. As I said this, it's, it's 21.30. I'm probably one minute behind because of the uh, the stream delay for web broadcasts. Let's give a check. It might be made. Should I take this one? Ah, it's tempting. Uh, but it's not good. And I play good chess moves. Let's go here instead. The ref knows who pays his bill. And now so do we, says True's Kane. That's kind of funny. That's pretty funny. Check. I can block the check with my bishop. And honestly, this move I wanted to do anyhow. Because I wanted to get the bishop to b5. Pointing down towards the king. There, I think Peru deserved a free kick and only got a throw in. But play goes on. Ooh, checkmate. Okay, it's going to be the last game of the day for me. It's going to be my newest subscriber, Holyfield, gets to finish the show. Actually, I might have time for one more after this. If the guy who's been... Um, uh, what was your name? Alec, are you going to do the last game of the day? Pop me a challenge.
Age four, that's very aggressive. I'm going to put my rook here, pointing towards your king. It's a more measured approach. Are you saying you cannot play chess because you're at Nat's house? That makes no sense, Alec. If anything, you're in a smarter environment than your house with your brother, right? Maybe the the surroundings will be extra inspiring for your chess skills. I'm here for a relaxed experience. This would be stressful, says Alec. Okay, fair enough. Uh, knight g5. I'm so tempted to sacrifice something. Uh, but I don't think it's going to work just yet. Ooh, Denmark penalty for Denmark. That's, that's clearly a penalty. And they have the video refereeing. They have the video refereeing. And is that going to be a penalty? What is going on? Why are we not... Why are we looking at the Peru coach? That was clearly a penalty. And they have the video system to check it out. But no, it's a goal kick for Peru. Ah, soccer. Okay, I get a free piece. I'm going to take that. I'm going to go here. I'm going to put a knight on g6 just to make sure I don't get checkmated. And then I'm going to do something on the other side. Maybe open up the c file. Put a rook on the c file. Okay, my guy tries to trade away my defensive knight. That makes a lot of sense. But on the other hand, when he takes it, he's going to give me a, a square on f7 to escape. And now with the trades, I'm still a piece up. So pretty good chances. No, uh, to me, it's just so surprising that people are still, I mean, giving, I mean, soccer has a problem that holding on to your opponents during a corner is apparently not illegal because it's never being uh, struck down upon. Uh, but when they have the, the cameras, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just surprised that people still make these kind of fouls. Uh, inside their own 16 yard box because I mean it's so scary no I, I mean with the video everyone can see that it should be a foul and that one day the referee decides enough of this Ooh, big chance for Peru huge chance for Peru but Simon Shai with the last ditch tackle to block the shot Big, big challenge from the defender to block that shot. Okay, I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna uh, divert my attention to the uh, soccer match featuring our Scandinavian neighbors uh, instead of this uh, chess stuff where anyhow I'm starving. Uh, so that's gonna be it from me. Uh, do check out my schedule for upcoming events. Uh, I'm going to be playing the Arena Bullet uh, tournament on Monday. So my next stream is Monday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, um, which is uh, 20.30 uh, Norsk Tid. 20.30 uh, Norsk Tid, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. That is my, um, on Monday, that's my next stream. 
Uh, I need to make a top five finish in the Arena Kings. This might be the day, uh, this coming Monday. So I hope you join me then. Um, I hope you enjoy the World Cup, those of you being uh, soccer fans or maybe becoming soccer fans over the course of, uh, of this coming month. Um, thank you all for playing. Uh, it's been a blast. And I hope to see you again.